Nitol tablets with the formula to help you get to sleep, stay asleep, and wake up feeling refreshed. And now let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the young lady who is currently specializing in daytime theater is the matinee star of the Broadway hit The Apple Tree, Miss Phyllis Newman. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. It's my very great pleasure tonight to introduce a very talented and funny young man. His current hit is called Don't Drink the Water, and it's the funniest show in New York. Mr. Woody Allen. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. On my left is one of the charming stars of Dinner at Eight at the Alvin Theater, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, gentlemen, just back from California, the mastermind of the Random House Dictionary, which is on the bestseller list, a man of a few words, and all of them in the dictionary, Mr. Bennett Cerf. And also back from California, though a little bit further north than I was, with his manly physique and his spectacular vocabulary unimpaired, the great moderator John Charles Daly. I'll have to send Bennett back to California again. <laughs> what a wonderful way to start the year. Thank you, Bennett. <laughs> Well, I must say, I appreciate it, and uh, the goodwill is reciprocated on my part, sir. May I say, uh, Miss Phyllis, Woody, it's nice to have you with us to uh, Thank you. get us well launched in the new year. And we have some, uh, I think, interesting guests to launch ourselves further into 1967, some very interesting occupations. We'll also have a famous mystery guest for my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program. But right now, let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Ruth Reinhold, right, man? <laughs> Is it Miss or Mrs. Reinhold? Mrs. Mrs. Reinhold. Yes. Where are you from, ma'am? Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona. Well, it's very nice to have you with us here. And uh, may I present the panel, Mrs. Reinhold? You do? Now, will you join us over here, ma'am, and we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Reinhold is salaried and deals in a service. And we'll begin things off with... Uh, then it's served. <clears throat> Mrs. Reinhold, you, you receive more applause than most contestants do. Uh, I wonder, have you anything whatever to do with Barry Goldwater or politics of any kind in Arizona? Yes. You do? Yes. Uh, are you uh, the holder of some office in California? In, in Arizona, I mean. No. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Phillips. But you do work in some way with uh, 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 Mr. Goldwater or with politicians. Yes. Um, do you, in the course of your job, do you write something? Do you, use, do you have occasion to use pad and pencil? Occasionally. 
Uh, do you see uh, Mr. Goldwater, say, once or twice a week? It depends. It depends. It could happen. It yeah. could happen. When you see him, does he tell you something and then you tell somebody else? Occasionally. <laughs> uh, do you ever tell him something? Occasionally. <laughs> you haven't done too well. <laughs> Let's see now. You tell him something and he tells you something. Have you worked with him for a long time? Yes. Are you in any way his secretary or assistant? No. Two down at eight to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, are you Goldwater's psychiatrist? <laughs> Is the position you hold, Mrs. Reinhold, one that requires you to speak to and meet many people? Yes. Would you be particularly active at a campaign time? Yes. Have you ever been a campaign manager of any sort for No. The... Nope. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Reinhold, I have a feeling that you're related somehow or other to Mr. Goldwater, are you? No. No? <laughs> well, that's a feeling you can get rid of right quite <laughs> quick. That's five down and five to go, Mr. Newman. When you, Mrs. Reinhold, do your service for... Do you do it for other people as well as Mr. Goldwater? Yes. It's not exclusive with him. Can you do what you do in your very own house? No. No, it's a little difficult. That's six down and four to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, do you come in contact with him physically when you do it? Uh, no. Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. <laughs> Mrs. Reinhold, uh, may I rule out any association with the Goldwater Department Store? Rule it out. Rule it out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> When you are in uh, the employ, are you in Mr. Goldwater's home at all? Occasionally. Would you be, uh, do you in any way help him or train him or are useful to him in some sort of a way that would add to his public appearance? Mm. You mean in terms of his physical appearance? Not necessarily. I mean in an advisory capacity of any sort. Uh-huh. Well, that's nice. That's eight down, two to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Mrs. Roenhoe, uh, Senator Goldwater travels a great deal by automobile and plane. Would you have anything to do with any of the vehicles in which he travels, either automobiles or planes? Yes. Are you his pilot? Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Reinhold learned to fly back in 1933, taught Senator Goldwater's brother and sister to fly, did you know? Yes. Holding, holding mm. instructor's ra uh, rating and instrument rating as a pilot. He's flown about 15,000 hours, flew Senator Goldwater during his campaign, and uh, even gave the senators some refresher courses on flying in the early days of the war. He's a brigadier general of the United States yes. Air Force, is he not? Yeah. Isn't that great? Yes. Wonderful. Congratulations. Just and you, you don't mind if I say you're in your 60s, do you? No. Because it's so. In your 60s, and you can still handle, handle that aeroplane. What is it that you, what is it you fly when you're flying the uh, Goldwater uh, plane? It's an Excalibur. It's a conversion of a twin bonanza that's done by Swearingen in Texas. Uh, what, how, what does she cruise at? About 250. About 250? Mm -hmm. Good hot airplane for moving around. Very nice airplane. Well, it has a very nice pilot. And may we thank you very much for giving John, us a Sunday evening. Yes, John, before Miss Reinhold leaves, I, I think uh, people who are listening might be interested in knowing that the senator is a magnificent photographer as well as a flyer. And as a matter of fact, he once took a photograph of uh, Jack Kennedy when he was senator. And uh, Senator Kennedy sent Senator Goldwater the picture and wrote underneath it, uh, Dear Barry, is hoping you reach the top of the profession that you were obviously cut out for. <laughs> Photography. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, it's nice to have had you, and uh, even if you're not a relative of, of uh, the Goldwaters, you're an old family friend I know well, for many years because I first heard about you from him, and oh. he's very proud of you. Thanks very much for being with us. And Thank once you. More.
another contestant for you in just a moment after this. Now to meet our next contestant, will you enter and sign in, please? Stella Brophy. Right, ma'am? <laughs> is it Miss or Mrs. Brophy? It's Mrs. Mrs. Brophy, where are you from? I am from St. Clair Shores, Michigan. St. Clair Shores, Michigan? Right. What's the biggest city near? Detroit. Detroit, nearby. Right. Fine. Nice to have you with us. Mrs. Brophy, may I present our panel? And now will you join me over here and we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right. Panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Brophy is self-employed and deals in a product. And we'll begin things with uh, Woody Allen. Uh, is, it, um, is the product found in the home? Yes. Uh, is it found in a particular room in the home? No. One down and nine to go, okay. Miss Francis. Uh, is it a product that any of us on the panel might have used? Yes. Uh, is it a product we could buy in a store? Yes. Uh, is it inanimate? Yes. <laughs> is it a product that comes in contact with the body? Yes. Can one hold it in one's hand? Yes. Has it any moving parts? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Brophy, you said it comes in contact with the body. Might it come in contact with the body of both a man and a lady? Not at the same time, I mean, but... Yes. I mean, it could be worn by either sex. Is that yes. correct? Yes. I think Mrs. Brophy would agree with me. It's fair to say that while this is true, we do not mean to... Uh, it isn't equal. Hmm? Say it's equal, right. Well, is it worn more by the female sex than the male sex? Yes, it is. Is it worn customarily below the waist? No. <laughs> no, that's a good idea. No. Three thousand seven to go, Miss Newman. Uh, um, everybody's saying worn, but we haven't established that it's an article of apparel, have we? No, we haven't. Well, then I'm going to do something else. Is it something that you could... You said not below the waist. So then it's something that comes in contact with your body above the waist. Yeah. Right? Is it something that if I held it in my hand, I could apply it to my body or no. smear it? No. No. I couldn't rub it in or smear it around. No, you couldn't rub it in or smear it. That's fine. Four down and six to go with the uh, If I suddenly caught you wearing it, uh, would you be embarrassed? No. <laughs> <laughs> five jobs, five to go to the Is it indeed worn? Yes, it is. And it is worn on the outside? Yes. And uh, if it is worn above the waist, does it go any higher than that? I mean, yes. Well, that, yes, let me put it. <laughs> let me put it this way. It is not beyond uh, possibility that taking the waist as a demarcation line of the body, that it might appear above the waist or, for that matter, below the waist. We would assume that uh -huh. it would be, in most cases, above. I see. Is it made of a material that is supple rather than uh, stiff? Oh, I should say so, wouldn't yeah. you? Yes, rather. Yeah. You can fold it around rather easily, can you? Fold it and around? Well, I, I mean, you have to put it around. Does it go around? Or uh, rather than just in one place, in front or behind? It depends on what partner. you want to put what? around. <laughs> Yeah, you kind of got us hung up there. In a way, we've got to admit it does go round, but as, as uh, Mrs. Brophy said, it depends on what you want to put it around. <laughs> oh. Hello there. Do you put it around something other than yourself? You mean yourself entire? You can't. No, but is it put around something other than oneself, Mrs. Brophy? I mean, could I put it around a close friend? <laughs> no. <laughs> Six dollars for a friend. my friend. <laughs> Mrs. Brophy, uh, is this, uh, is the material that this is made of ever far of any kind? No. No. Seven dot and three to go, Miss Newman. All right, let's review this. We have this thing in our hands, right? We can hold it in our hands, yes? Yes. Yeah. We can 
wrap it around ourselves? No. no. You couldn't in any way put it around yourself? No. No, that... But yet it goes around you. <laughs> no. No, that's not. What we said was that we'd agree that it... Did. Now, this, we're not giving you a no on it because this is information yeah. previously elicited. Yeah. What we agreed on was that it could be described as going around, but as Mrs. Brophy said, it all depended on what you were putting it around. You see? Is it made of anything other than cloth? Yes. Is it made of either leather or plastic or metal? Well, make up your <laughs> mind. You give any information? I'm trying my best, Mrs. Brophy. I'll jump out of there with me. Is it leather? That's no. a good girl. It's not a dude go, Woody. Uh, is it something that you would uh, wear? Are you happy wearing it? Oh, I'm just thrilled with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you a no. This is some Brophy would be, something? but you would, yes. Give some it a jewelry? Is it a jewelry? jewelry? No. Do you have it on no. now? No. Yes. It, you no. have something on now? Yeah. Is it the chain on you? No. The beading on your sleeve? No. no. Your eyeglasses? No. no. Your nose? <laughs> Ten, we won the wedding. game. What is it? We won the game. Actually, Mrs. Brophy makes thimbles. <laughs> and I must say, Arlene and, and Phyllis will be more interested probably than, than Woody and Bennett, but it's uh, a, a new thimble. Actually, it's called Brophy's new thimble. It's the first change in the thimble in 2,000 years. It's got five thumbs. It's, it's got five thumbs. It's made of plastic so that, you know, it, it'll... Any size finger, I mean. That's right. There it is. And I do have it on. I wasn't telling lies. See, there it is. And the, you oh. can, if you've got long nails, you can just stick it in. It doesn't, make, it doesn't break the nails and things. Now, I think that's great for all of you. I'm for and that. Yeah. You're all for that. Yeah. Let me, let's, let's have get, a thimble full. Let's no. listen with Mrs. Brophy. Let's get something set. You say... Uh, is it worn below the waist? It's worn on the end of the finger. Is it worn below the waist? It is yeah. sometimes if well, your hand would... is below the waist. Yeah, How but, well you, don't, but you, you wouldn't have your My hands, hands down. Below the waist. Not when you're waiting the thumb. Because all I want is a rule for the future. <laughs> if it's something to do with the hands and you say below the waist, I'm going to say no, right? I'll bet yeah, Arlene's never had a symbol on in her whole life. This I'd mean. make every stitch I wear. It's going to be a cold, cold winter. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, this myth. Now, the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which all members of the panel are always, as you all know, blindfolded. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes. Yes, sir. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? You know the rules, one question at a time in this case. In turn, moving clockwise, we'll begin things with Arlene Francis. Would one find your name in the theatrical pages of the newspaper? Da. Mr. Sir? Russian newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, judging by the wolf calls uh, from this uh, very hep audience, might I assume that you are a uh, very lovely Lady. That's you, man. <laughs> Ms. Newman? Are you uh, c currently appearing in either a movie or a play? Nah. Mr. Allen? Uh, are you appearing in something on Broadway at the moment? You mean by this, uh, the legitimate theater? The legitimate theater. Nah. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Uh, are you about to appear in a play on Broadway? No. I... Two down, a date to go, Mr. Is that Sir. No or I? That, that's no. That's no. Are you a purely American movie actress? <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Well, American. No, I... What? <laughs> well, now you're speaking here, I take it, of origins or... You, do you mean working solely in the United States? No, I mean, is she an American girl? American girl. Then da. you get a da. Yeah, Miss Newman. Are you beautiful and married to a Frenchman? Da. Okay. Beautiful and married to a Frenchman? <laughs> well, you think that's impossible? <laughs> Don't be silly. It's Mrs. De Gaulle. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I don't know anyone that's beautiful and married to a Frenchman. Uh, uh, you're, you're positive he's a Frenchman. Yeah, we're reasonably sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <coughs> Do you play the comb and wax paper? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, does do that for fun, Miss Francis. Is the Frenchman you're married to a director by the name of Vadim? Yeah. yeah. Are you Jane Fonda? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we tried a trick, because I'm sure you all four know that the game is over in which Miss Jane is starring and which uh, Monsieur Vadim directed is premiering right here in New York. That's still on, right? It just opened tonight. Yeah, just opened it's tonight, but it's still on tonight at Transsex Theater. So we thought you might be led off into some pastures knowing that uh, it was starting tonight. Didn't think Miss Jane could get here. But we got her here. And they did pretty well. I think they did In well. spite of your Russian <laughs> accent. And, uh, or the Netherlands. Nine. That was, that was... I don't know what it was. They wouldn't let me use the voice I wanted to because they said you'd never hear. <laughs> what was it? Let's try. Yeah. <laughs> we had heard it, but we wouldn't have been able to do a thing with Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say, I hope that this is a, a fine, successful picture, but more I... I signed in as you, Woody. Nobody got that. Oh, that's the thing thoughts. I wanted to... Yeah, it was wonderful. Really? Was I heard you, you, came, when you, you came in last year and you signed Cary Grant. Yes, and I got a lot of mail on it. <laughs> <laughs> But Did you sign uh, Cary Grant? I signed Woody Allen. Signed Woody oh, Allen. Yeah, big old script. You'll probably be stopped in the street script. tomorrow and ask for uh, <laughs> what well, I'm usually asked for. Don't drink the water. This must have caused some confusion. <laughs> <laughs> well, we recently had the joy of having your uh, your dad here. Your brother was with, with us last year too. This makes it uh, the trio, the whole family, and uh, we thank you very much, ma'am, for you. completing the circle. Mm -hmm. Lovely to have you with us. I can't help but think about the confusion at home because as Bennett says, we have a wonderfully uh, cooperative and live audience tonight and they're yeah. howling and screaming and here's this handwriting, Woody Allen, in both <laughs> hands up on the screen. Well, she hasn't got the same facade. Hasn't got the same facade. You've done very well tonight, panel, and I'll offer you some congratulations. We'll all be back after this word in front of me. It's been a lot of fun. I told you, Phyllis and Woody, that we had some surprises for you tonight. I think you'll agree we did have. Yes. Thanks for being a part. I think we all had a lot of fun tonight. I'm going back to the Napa Valley in California to find out what makes California give Bennett such a sprightly spirit at the beginning of the year. <laughs> and good night, Miss Phyllis. Good night, John. Good night, Woody. Good night. Good night, Father. Good night, Woody. Good night, dear Bennett. You must tell me more about your dressmaking sometime. <laughs> you phony. <laughs> good night, John. <laughs> You'll find that phony in the dictionary. <laughs> and good night, Bennett, and thanks to all of you for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Topper. It's Francis Gown from Bond with Teller. This is Johnny Olson speaking for What's My Line.